Welcome to this e-imaging review of the Bostor 22 HDX. We've been using this screen now for approximately a year and in that time it's not missed a beat at all. We've previously used those eagle-eyed viewers we'll be able to see the Wacom Intuos 5 medium. So this gives you an idea of the size of the screen. The Bostor is 22 inch display that's around 53 centimeters from corner to corner. It's a 1080p display. Pen pressure is 2048 levels. The pen itself is cordless, battery free, so it just works as you get closer to the screen itself. Much like the Wacom, it has express keys and a, a jog dial. It's got 20 express keys, 10 on one side, 10 on another, a jog dial on either side. It comes with an adjustable stand which offers a very good range of motions. It can lay almost flat because all of the wires are on the side of the monitor, not on the base, or it can stand almost straight up. So if you've got reflections overhead, it's very, very useful. If we have a look at the pen itself, and we'll compare that to the Intuos pen, we can see they are very, very similar. The pens themselves are almost the same size. They have a nice rubber grip on the front here, same with the Bosto pen. They both also have an eraser, so if you were to draw something and turn the pen over, you can erase. It automatically selects the erase tool to do that. That's both with the Wacom pen and the Bosto pen. And it also has a little rocker switch here so that you can select a function to apply on the rocker switch there so all intents and purposes it's very very similar to the Wacom pen um, that we've been using. Now the express keys why are these important? Well they actually speed up your workflow so I'm going to minimize the screen now and go to the key roll set so we can see here this uh, is set up for the right hand side of the screen so if I press the first button let me move that there, press the first button on the top right side of the bank it will do a new layer second key hide all layer masks invert and so on on the left hand side if I just select Photoshop left we've got undo hue and then things like uh, zoom in and zoom out brush size so I'll give you a quick example of that so we'll create a new document, 300 dpi 9x6, that's fine. Just make sure that's full screen. And we'll zoom in to 100%, so I'll press the express key, use the jog dial, and we can see we've got to 100% here. If I select a brush, you can see we dot a few times. There we go. I can use another button to increase the size of the brush up and down. And you can see that depending on how hard I press, the pressure increases and decreases. I'll just turn it off to show you the eraser. So again, all I've done is turn the pen over and we have a pressure sensitive eraser. Now you'll notice that as with the Wacom, we have these size and pressure toggles here. And what that means is the harder I press, the darker the mark is, but also the bigger the mark is. So you can see that it goes from a very narrow one to a very thick one, and so on and so on. Now these express keys, if we go back to the express keys, are really limited to your imagination. You can choose more or less anything you want. If you apply a keyboard shortcut, you can use it so if we go back to Photoshop I can use the hand tool so I'm pressing the keyboard shortcut the express key sorry on the tablet and moving the mouse cursor with the pen by touching the screen itself I can use the alt key there or I can have that set to the pen itself so I've got brush size set to there at the moment what you can also do is you can use a rotate which is very useful for when you're doing intricate masking you can just keep rotating the screen a little bit for your masking there. So as we can see, it's very useful. 
just shrink the brush down a little bit go back to the beginning so we'll reset the view go right back to the beginning and as you can see there is no lag at all with this pen the screen is very good you change the opacity you can get right in there with some very fine lines push a little bit harder so as I say this screen hasn't missed a beat it's been every bit as good as the Wacom Intuos 5 that we've been using for many years now for photographers the actual color of the screen the calibration is very very important so if I just close this here have a couple of prints bring the prints into view so we're going to have a quick look at these so these just are three prints at random that represent a body of work that applies to different photographers so we will go to our color test I'll open the first one and there we go so I'll get rid of the rulers and zoom in a so there we can see there's a, a very very good color reproduction now there will always be differences between a print which reflects light and a screen which emits light generally you want the screen to be slightly less contrasty because some printer profiles will apply um, optimization to the image and make them slightly more contrasty so you always want a arguably less flattering screen so that you don't do any blowouts or you lose some of the DMAX in the blacks you don't want any crushed blacks so that's that image we will open another one there we go so this is a little more editorial as we can see the colours here in the trees are extremely good the skin tone is slightly warmer in the print but it's probably got something to do with the lights that I've set up to do this particular video with so all in all this is a very good reproduction I've no problems recommending the Bosto compared to our old Lassi monitor which we used previously and just one more picture we'll have a look at a landscape zoom in a bit there so as we can see very very similar in terms of the colour and the tones there I know it's a bit difficult guys sorry so all together very very pleased with the quality of the colour offered from the Bosco and uh, it now is com has completely replaced the Intuos 5 because it's just as good at using the uh, Bosto as the Intuos with Photoshop with photo editing and also has replaced our Lassi monitor because again the screen colour reproduction is so good these prints here have come directly from our printer downstairs which is a Fujifilm 570 Frontier digital lab printer with no correction and it's almost a, a case of what you see is what you get with the, with the monitor as I say there is some differences because of the fundamental differences between a screen which projects light and a print which reflects light now why is uh, why would you look to consider getting something like this or even something that you can use with a pen anyway well I exit this off the screen bring the tools back we'll have a quick look at why it might be useful for somebody so we'll go into here and we'll just grab no we'll try another one grab any picture we want so we'll have mm, this one will do so we'll open it in Photoshop this way right so we'll go through a few things now the biggest addition that you want to your Photoshop Arsenal is the pen pressure now the pressure will work on any brush like tools which includes the brush itself the healing tool the clone tool the history tool burning and dodging really anything that 
most photographers are going to use you can use pressure on why is this good well going back to these things where it changes the size and also the density of the mark it's a very useful to stop you fiddling with these sliders if you're using a mouse so the first thing I want to do really is probably crop this because it's it's less than ideal is the uh, the framing of that so I'm just removing these figures here so that we don't change any of the resolution of the image all we do is crop out the pixels that we don't want so we're just going to simply select an area and I want to keep in this arch here and there we go that will do so that looks much better already there we go now I want to get rid of this guy here so if I was going to get rid of him with a mouse I'd have to zoom in and then maybe I'd select this area here or create a mask but either way I'd have to get something like a stamp tool and there we go and then we'd have to change the opacity up and down and so on but because this brush the the poster offers a pen pressure I can leave the opacity up to 100% because the opacity is controlled by the pressure I apply with a pen and also I can do very very small marks so I'm going to create a new layer there using the express key and we're going to set current layer and below for the stamp so I'm just going to go ahead and brush a few of these marks and then you can see that this, the less I press the smaller the mark is so if I push really hard you can see it really taking the detail away straight away bring the brush down just a little bit so you can see I'm not having to touch the keyboard at all those express keys are really coming in useful to get a bit of this wall here Now this edge, I want to follow this edge, use the brick. There we go. Excuse my silence guys, it's uh, one thing to talk and another thing to work at the same time. Still not up there with the YouTube greats yet. So again just using the express key to randomize the point picking a little bit so that we don't get any repetition. And as you can see there's absolutely no lag with this, we're just pressing it away. I probably could have done with using a harder brush to keep some of the texture in there. Let's go back a little bit. That's going to keep more of the texture in the, the brickwork maybe we'll zoom in to a few more parts of this image and just get rid of a few things so now we do want to use the automatic spot healing brush we'll just zoom in and on the same layer again we'll just take a few of these marks away so again it's very easy because I can see exactly where I'm pressing so there's no disconnect between a separate screen and a separate tablet so for things like this it's a lot easier just to click away and you can see I can do a very small mark or a very thick mark depending on what's necessary So that's one way we can use the Bosco to edit a picture without having to create a mask and to have control to go around areas like the, uh, the shoulder and the hairline there. Very quick, very easy and very, very natural. I do know the dog here as well, but uh, I can save that for another video. <laughs> In summary then, we are very, very impressed with the Bosco 22 HDX. 
We ordered it directly from Boston and it took about a week, a working week, to arrive. It really offers value for money, I feel. It's replaced not only a screen, which is worth around £800, it's also replaced the Wacom Intuos 5 Medium, which is probably around £270. So a single device to replace both of those, which is cheaper to buy than the combined price of the two, uh, is very good value. We've been using it, as I've mentioned, for almost a year. That's five days a week, eight hours a day. I'm still on the same nib, which is really impressive. And the Bosto looks brand new. There's no question that uh, the actual manufacture of the Bosto is very good quality. It, uh, yes, it is made out of plastic and it isn't really rubberized like something like the Wacom is. Uh, but really for day-to-day -day use, the colour accuracy is fantastic. The accuracy of the tracking is very good. The, uh, there is no discernible lag from the pen. And really we are very impressed. In addition to the physical express keys on the Bosto 22 HDX, I also like to use a piece of freeware software called Radial Menu. Now anybody who's familiar with using a Wacom tablet will have used something similar to this. If I bring it up, I've mapped it to an express key, so I'll show you an example of it. So this is the Radial Menu. And as we can see, it offers different kind of slices of pie. It's a bit like a Trivial Pursuit pie. And uh, these can be set to different keyboard shortcuts. Now, it will appear wherever my mouse is tracking. So if I'm up here and press the button, we get it up here. If I'm down here and press the button, we'll get it down here. So I'll show you an example of exactly what it does. We'll create a new 9x6. And we'll full screen and get to 100%. We'll make a mark, bring up the radial menu, and we can then undo the mark. We make another mark, and then create a selection. We can copy the selection, paste the selection, and move to, there we go. So I don't need to go into all of these different menus, and I don't need the small keyboard as much because the radial menu offers lots of functions. Now the function themselves are keyboard shortcuts that I have programmed in. So if I want to go to the select, you can see that I've added several selections, uh, several keyboard functions under the select menu. Likewise for image, we have several image selection options under there, and for colour, several there as well. So Radial Menu is really a fantastic companion for something like the Bosto 22 HDX because it allows you to, again, it keeps you free from using your keyboard as much and certainly from the menus which are going to slow down your workflow. So really together with the Physical Express Keys, Radial Menu is another great tool to use together with the Bosto.